I've annotated and analyzed 40 top-level Riftbound games, 530 turns taken, 539 points scored, to share with you how the game's top players actually get points, which mechanics they use to win, and a whole host of smaller insights. Chief among them, can Purple Yasuo actually go Hasagi? I'm Simon from Games Deconstructed, and let's get started. I want to start us off with a quick reminder of how you can actually score points in a game of Riftbound, and if you already know this, I promise I'm not going to waste a lot of your time. So, the first way to score points is to move your units into a battlefield that you don't already control. They will fight whatever they find in there, might be opposing forces, might be nothing, and if they are the only ones left standing at the end of that process, you get control of the battlefield and get a point. That's called a conquer. If these units stay at that battlefield until the start of your next turn, you get another point for what's called holding. If they survive yet another turn, you get another point, and so on and so forth. The third and by far the most niche way to get points is to play cards that mention point getting somewhere in their rules text. I've briefly shown you Yasuo, who gets points if you can make him zip around the battlefield, but there's also Ari Alluring, who gets points if you're able to find her a nice home, and in terms of cards that actually see play in the current meta, there's the Arena's Greatest, a location that gives each player a point at the end of their first turn, effectively shortening the match by half a turn to maybe a turn. You need 8 points to win, which might occasionally be 9 due to the effect of another battlefield that's currently seeing play, this one called Aspirant's Climb, which raises the total needed by 1. This one has kind of the opposite use case to Arena's Greatest. Late game decks use it to prolong the game by a turn or two. But getting that last point is a bit more complicated. If you get it by holding, great, you win. So if you're on 7 points and start your turn in control of a battlefield, you can probably start warming up those handshake muscles. But if you want to get that last point by conquering, you need to score both of the battlefields on that same turn. So your options for winning the game are hold one or both battlefields, hold one, then conquer the other, and conquer both on the same turn. So let's take a look at how our top players actually score points, shall we? So I laboriously went over 40 VOD games, primarily from Shanghai and the RuneCent Rift Cash Tournament Finals, and noted down the source of every single point. This is a great opportunity to give me a sub, by the way, if you feel like it. And here are the results. 69% of all points were scored by conquering, 28% via holding, and 3% came from other sources. Primarily the Arena's Greatest, though I did have two Yasuo games in there, in both of which he was able to score at least one point. I wouldn't say that this split is unexpected. After all, you need to conquer at least once in order to hold the battlefield afterwards, so I would expect the first to be a bit more prevalent than the second. You can theoretically hold multiple times of a single conquer, but that would indicate that your opponent is not really making any efforts to fight back, because if they did destroy your units, you would need to reconquer before you could keep on holding. So this kind of echoes a piece of advice that I've heard thrown around lately, don't try holding on to battlefields too much. Although I would be cautious about applying this as a rule of thumb, just because we've seen that about 30% of points do come off conquering. So if I were to readjust this bit of advice slightly, it would go something like, have a good reason for trying to hold for more than one turn. If you're playing against a ramp deck and they are not going to be fighting for the board in the first couple of turns and you have an aggressive start, sure, go for it. If you've seen your opponent's hand or they are in top deck mode and you are winning on board, also go for it. Otherwise, maybe try to limit yourself to holding for 0 to 1 times per conquer. There's also two interesting anecdotes that I found when exploring this data that I'm sure you will like as well. The first is that you can occasionally come across board states where players have kind of split the battlefield in half. One's holding one of the battlefields, the other is holding the other. 
This sort of impasse mostly arises of a combination of one of the players having cards that are stronger on defense, something like the Master E Legend or the RE Legend, and the other seeming a bit stronger on board or implying that they have interaction in hand, something Kai'Sa decks might do. This results in a standoff, both players unwilling to try to break through and so content to score a point a turn and stock up, waiting for the right moment to strike. Another anecdote is that in aggressive matchups, primarily Ani versus Kai'Sa, but also Kai'Sa mirrors, there isn't really holding to speak of, maybe for that last final points. The points will mostly be garnered via a series of conquers and reconquers. There's constant trading of battlefields. I've seen games where there wasn't a single point for holding scored by either player of the two. And the reasons for this is that first, both of these strategies kind of naturally slot into that playstyle that wants to be aggressive, but there's also the added incentive to get points from conquering rather than holding to activate the effect of Kai'Sa Survivor, which is a centerpiece of both of these decks and is immensely powerful, provided you are on the offensive. And if you want to see what other decks Kai'Sa Survivor is featured in or create a deck that includes her yourself, there's no better place to do that than the partner for today's video. Piltover Archive is the website to be when it comes to creating decks, browsing lists from other players and top tournaments alike, and keeping track of your collection. Thank you, PiltoverArchive.com, for partnering with me for this video. Now, another thing I thought of examining here is how prevalent are turns where a player scores two or more points. Well, realistically, apart from the Yasuo examples, it's going to be two points. And out of the turn where any points were scored, 58% of the time it was just a single point, but an impressively high 42% of the time it was two plus points that were scored. On two occasions it was actually three points, thanks to Yasuo going crazy mode. This indicates to me that there's a great deal of explosivity in the format right now. You'll have big blowout turns where the state of who's winning will change considerably, especially when cards like Thousand-Tailed Watcher enter play. But even when those turns happen, that doesn't mean that the game immediately calcifies into one player winning for the remainder of it. There's still possibility of a back and forth, possible double conquers from the other side and the game being turned around. Another factor that inflates these numbers slightly is the popularity of dazzling Aurora decks. Their game plan is to spend the first two turns ramping, usually giving up all board presence, but making up for that with the ability to play Aurora turn 3 or at worst turn 4. Once that happens, they start dropping massive bombs every turn. As a result, they tend to get both double scored on in the early game which they forsake and double scored themselves in the mid to late game which they want to win. And indeed, if we take just the Aurora games on our list, 62% of the time a player scored, it was a two-point turn, with 38% of turns being single pointers. Again, that's out of turns where at least one point was scored. So this gives us an expected cadence for games. If you play like the top players do, you can expect about two-thirds of your points to come from conquering and to score two points on a bit less than 50% of your turns. If you're playing an aggressive matchup, more points will come from those conquers and less from holding, whereas if one of the players is playing an Aurora strategy, there will probably be a higher likelihood of double point turns. But these points are, of course, in service of winning. So let's take a look at how players actually accomplish winning the game. 42% of victories came off a hold or a double hold. 20% of a hold and then a conquer, and 38% off of a double conquer. The double conquers are probably the most exciting of the three. If you're holding, or double holding for that matter, for the win, there is a point on your opponent's turn where the game is already decided. 
But that is not the case with a double conquer. With a double conquer, that means a final turn turnaround, especially in situations where the opponent was set to win themselves if you don't take over both battlefields. And that double conquer may be the result of a big, explosive bomb card coming down, something like a Watcher, a Grand Stratagem, or a dedicated double conquer combo like Vi plus Ride the Wind. I'm going to leave it to you to decide if 38% of games ending in a big swing like this is an exciting playing environment for you personally, but having watched over 12 hours of VODs in preparation for this, I can say that it makes for a good viewing experience, so there's that. And finally, there's one last bit of insight that I wanted to share, and I might actually need your help with this one. I wanted to take a look at what their win rates were depending on if players went first or second. And before I share the results, I have to stress that this is by no means a big enough sample size to say anything final. But in the games I analyzed, the player going first won 70% of the time, with the ones going second obviously winning the remaining 30%. And yes, even Aurora decks chose to go first when they had that option most of the time. I asked around, and it seems commonly believed that going first does net you an advantage in Riftbound. And based on our results, it might look like it's a drastic advantage. But on a sample size this small, this is just 40 games, there isn't enough evidence to say that, hey, you're 70% likely to win if you go first. The difference may be as small as 5%, a 55-45 split, in favor of the person going first, and the results that we see in the 40 matches here could arise by random chance. As such, I would like to establish exactly how big of an advantage going first is in Riftbound, and I might need your help. So if you have been collecting data on what your win rate is going first versus going second, share that with me in the comments, get in contact with me through some other way, and we will get to the bottom of this eventually. Thanks a lot for watching, and a special thank you to the patrons over on patreon.com slash gamesdeconstructed, especially Jakub Burdun, Dillinger, and Ola Briner. I've been Simon from Games Deconstructed, and I hope to see you in the next one.